We got music and a countdown and we're ready to go. Hi everybody, you know, StreamYard is the easiest way to produce your own live show. And millions of people use StreamYard to broadcast their shows about everything from apple picking to Zamboni making. All you really need is a laptop and a browser, but some of us like to go the extra mile. And this show is all about what those show hosts do so well. So we have a great guest today and the number one rule of a uh, live show is get a great guest to carry the show for you. And we've got that today. So we'll be right back after the intro with a great guest and Joanne, my co-producer here. Gosh, I can't read off a teleprompter for my my for the life of me. But uh, let's bring in. Uh, how about we do this? Uh, first of all, hi everybody, and uh, tell us. Uh, put it, I love seeing the comments, and I love when everybody kind of introduces themselves and get the conversation going down below. So so yeah, uh, let's put your comments in there, and you can join us live on the show. So we'll put up the link. You can uh, join us live here in the studio with us, and you can ask questions or tell your story. And uh, that'll be great. Let's bring in uh, the person behind the screen. You know, every the, the smallest person on the show and the team is usually not the person in front of the camera. So I want to introduce you to Joanne right here. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. Hey, everyone. We are super excited for the show, but I want to know where everybody is from. So let us know where you are tuning in from. Say hello. We want to hear from you. And we also have an amazing guest today. Richard Wilmore has been streaming and doing his own show with the Richard Wilmore Show since 2016. He has started using StreamYard about a year ago. He's also going to use StreamYard to host his own podcast and um, produce a podcast. So we are very excited to have Richard on. So welcome, Richard. Good morning. <laughs> the pressure to be a good guest you put up for me. <laughs> I'm gonna just put the cat in front of the screen. She might be better. Cats Cats are always, they make a great show. It's just some scientific mm -hmm. uh, thing, is some, some science here. It, it has to do with a virus, the serious. It's called, I forgot the name of the virus, because a virus the cats have, and it's essentially a biological weapon. So people who are exposed to the cat's virus, and specifically mice, they tend to be more affectionate towards the cats and more docile. Um, in fact, people who have this virus tend to take riskier behavior, but also be more friendly. So they get into more car accidents. And it sounds like fake news, but it's I true. I was going to say, are and you reading this right now, or is this something you know? <laughs> no, this is true. This is this is completely true, as far as I know. Um, and and um, I forget the name. And and, it, uh, and uh, it's also that's why pregnant women should not be around cats because they mm. might get the, they could contract the virus could have some effect on the pregnancy. But the bottom line is, it makes you like cats. And so the mice that are infected with this, they are more less afraid of cats and they get eaten. Mm. And so whenever yeah. about there's some percentage of human population that sees a cat, they have the virus and they just go, oh, and it's <laughs> not. <laughs> so put a cat on the screen Let's and see what you're guaranteed Let's to Let's see have... how many ahs we get. And oh my gosh, I hate cats. <laughs> Comment from a cat on the there screen. There we go. Steve. Wait, that's wow. a different cat. How many cats have you got? Yeah, it's many? like a petting zoo here. They're both, look at, they're both, <laughs> it's like they they love you guys, I guess. I have two and they're now part of what's happening here. I'm so sorry. Oh my sorry. gosh, I love it. I can't even stop it. <laughs> well, if you throw them away, they're just going to come back. Well, that's so. what I've been doing. And now watch, they'll probably like start fighting. This one is 17 and she's going blind. And so she doesn't always know where she is and she'll run into the other one and then the other one gets mad at her. So this is my life. Care to join? Okay. 
<laughs> well, Spectrum is uh, is saying can't wait for us to get started talking about how to make our streams better. Yes. So, uh, I think that was a cue I'm for gonna, stop yes. talking about cats. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> stop, I will see talk. you guys behind the scenes. <laughs> behind the scenes, see you, see you, and we're gonna keep uh, the audio on it during some of the show. So, uh, so Joanne can uh, jump in with questions or moderate and get us moving when we get. Uh, a little sidetracked here that might happen in today's it's show because we have pleasant. such a great guest. Okay, so uh, so Richard, let's give a little bit of background here before we talk about how you run your show and what exactly you do. And let's talk about what it is you do, what what is your show about, um, and give us a bit of background. Sure. So, you know, like any 10-year-old boy, I wanted to be a talk show host, like every 10-year-old boy does. I uh, fell in love back in the late 90s with the Rosie O'Donnell show. And I saw that show and I thought, oh my God, she's having fun for an hour a day and making people laugh and having a great time. And uh, just the vibe of that entire show is, I was like, this is what I need to do. And there were, it was just like, it was a variety show essentially. And so I always wanted to have a show and I built a little, this was back in the late nineties, a little studio in my, uh, apartment or in my house when I was growing up and I would pretend to be a talk show host and I would talk to fake guests and that's what I did until I actually was able to do it in real life. Cool. You make it sound so simple, but you've been it, doing it for a while. <laughs> Listen, right? it was the late nineties. It's 2021. Yeah. I'm still sitting in a bedroom playing talk show <laughs> host. So I don't know how easy that is, but I love it. It's so fun. I I love that. It takes time, right? It so does. let's take a look at let's take a look at the the at your studio. What have you sure. got? And maybe we can talk a little bit about it. We always open with the tech, so let's start there. Uh, so we'll put on the screen here a photo of sure. your. Yeah, here we go. Uh, thanks, Joanne. And this is essentially where you where you stream. So that what are is the, so what it are is it, so one of my rules for my show is I try to improve something every week. So that's like kind of a goal for me. So this was when I first uh, started stream. That's in my living room, actually. That red curtain is my living room window. And behind the backdrop, the cityscape is my couch. Um, and so I set that up. I'm now, right now, currently where I'm at is in a corner of my bedroom. So that every week I would set that entire thing up all the lights, all the backdrops, all the things. And it just got to be, there you go. It just got to be a lot of work <laughs> to do mm -hmm. this every week. So I found some empty wall space and I obviously got a new backdrop um, and set it up. So it's most of it set up all the time in my bedroom. So I just have to put up lights and, and some smaller stuff. Wow, so your bedroom is kind of taken over by this this setup, which is there the entire time. Yeah, the red curtains are still in the living room, so I actually have two cameras, and I and I I start my show out in front of that red curtain, and then I usually go to a musical guest or a pre-taped video, and then during that video or the guest, I will go to the desk and sit down in front of where I am now. Right. So, so I what move are we? Around. What are we seeing here in terms of equipment? One thing, I, one thing I can see right away is lots and lots of lighting. Yes, I have horrible lighting in my apartment. So I invested in lights, which they're actually, I was expecting you to pay way more. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you want to talk about like pricing or anything. Does that matter? Uh, sure, whatever okay. you've got, tell us. So, yeah. I mean, I got those on Amazon, like you buy everything else. And a three pack was like $70. Uh, so I thought for lights, that was a pretty good price and they work really well. Um, and one of them is like a crane so you can, you can have it go above you. It's a really, it's a really nice set of lights that I use. Um, I also have one of those, like the, um, the little, their camera, um, stands, but it moves. Have you ever seen oh. those? They're like remote controlled and then it'll move with you or you can, it'll oh, either wow. watch you. So I have one of those, um, and that's really it, and a computer. Nice. I, so, so I try to keep it pretty easy because I don't know a lot of tech things. And we do have somebody asking, what kind of camera are you using? Because your picture is really clear. Right now? Um, this is mm -hmm. just an external webcam. For my show, I use an iPhone 12, but this was easier uh, 
to do for this. So, you, so I'm just using just, a, an external webcam. So it's right straight off the iPhone. You don't even go after the desk, the computer, or you nope. do both. One no, when I stream, when I stream my show, it's off of my phone. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and and the, and the picture does look really awesome here. So, so we talked about a bit of your equipment, and and let's talk a little bit about what what have you learned over the years that works for you really well. What kind of best practices have you adapt adopted? Mm. Uh, patience. So I first, I I, know, I always wanted to be a talk show host. I didn't really want to be a producer or a video editor or anything like that. So I filmed my first episode in 2016. And then I had this hour long show and I was like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. So I just Googled free editing software because I didn't have any money. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. So I found a program and um, I started just teaching myself. And so I think I've learned, that's what I've learned is patience because everything to make it look good takes time. You can't just throw it up there. You can't just go live with no equipment, with no anything and expect it to look or feel good. Right. You know, we were talking a little bit before we started the show, we got ready a few minutes before and we were talking a little bit about setup with guests and I'm, and, as, and, and I was busy looking at you. I didn't even look at myself and I now realize that um that this uh we the <laughs> that your head is bigger than mine and as you're talking I told visuals, you. you told me so i'm gonna look I'm gonna and i'm taller than you up. wait i can go yeah. down too i there can we come go. here does that so help no, we'll doing... go back up okay so we'll make sure we're now we're... <laughs> so there so now we're... <laughs> there we go so now we're so now we've got symmetry in in terms of power much better um, but if we wanted to uh to show a little bit of hierarchy here I could make sure that I'm a little bit superior to you by doing this. Look how like I feel like I've shrunk. Just look at how different of, that looks. A little bit of flex right there, right? Just yeah. Flex. Or or I could make my head a little bit bigger and make myself a bit more important than you are in the show. And that's, uh, you know, I think a lot of people do this subconsciously and a lot of people don't notice it, but it does matter because it mm -hmm. makes one feel a little bit closer than the other. And therefore, the person who is closer, by definition, is more, you know, the attention is given to them more. So one has to really pay attention to that kind of stuff. But it, it can also be a little bit of a psychological warfare sometimes. I've, yeah, I've also known it's just like placement on the screen. Like just where people are changes mm. sort of the dynamic. I was co-hosting a podcast with one guest. And so we were both on top and the guest was underneath. And I was like, we have to change this. It looks like we're interrogating this person. Like we're both like looming over them. I'm like that's not, it doesn't look very friendly. So we, so we changed it. Right. And I like to put both, if I have two guests, put them both on top because the comments below, they might cover the portion of the screen. Mm -hmm. And I find it to be a bit disrespectful if I bring a guest in to put, you know, to place the comments on top of them when I have the option not to. Yeah. So I, um, so I make sure to put the guest on top and and put the comments to cover myself. Uh, so yeah, interesting, interesting, uh, interesting games here of different orientation. <laughs> it is, and you I, don't even realize it but until you're like doing it, and then you're like, oh yeah, that looks weird or that yeah. Right. So we talked about patience. You mentioned patience. What what other best practices have you figured out over the years? Um, I think planning helps, and I also. Uh, think that uh, my rule for me is do it until it isn't fun anymore. So I never have like, this is how many, how mm -hmm. many episodes I want in a season, or this is how many guests I want. I do it until, because it's fun. So I do it if it isn't fun and it becomes too much work or there's other stuff that's going on that I'm not giving it a hundred percent, then, then I close my season. So that's what I've learned to not put so much pressure on yourself. I love that. And I love the fact that you're kind of just open to evolving the show as it goes, um, which is great. Yeah. And, I, and and we're evolving this show and I'm constantly changing it. And, and, and I think, and I think, yeah, the passion really shows in your show, like um, in the, this is kind of, you know, this is who you are. Right. Yeah. 
And yeah, I went to school to be an actor and then I realized I can't, I'm not good at like being other people, but I'm pretty good at being myself. And and you and you and you put it out there. And if you're not, if at some point you're not quite, it becomes routine, or it just becomes reading off a checklist. It's just not that it doesn't resonate the same way. Yeah. And so I agree, and I, and I applaud you for keeping that alive. It, it really shows in your shows. It really shows in your shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about your theme. It's so lively. All this carnival. Um, the carnival crew it's not a crew it's just it's a, a circus movie. it's a circus. circus that's my show it's a circus well your show is a circus yes that's what i think <laughs> in what way like metaphorically or, or yeah like like it's just you never know what's going to happen i mean i've had circus performers on my show uh there's just especially in a live format obviously everything's virtual now and and when we're able to go back and film in a in a studio or a theater um i will continue to use Streamyard because i think it's amazing but i'm excited to see like my show in a live format with an audience there are games there are all kinds of things happening so uh you have to i had to tone it down a little bit for the for the platform of being virtual um or filming it all virtual but it's definitely the vibe is supposed to be a fun. You're not sure what's going to happen, uh, but you're here to meet people that you would never meet any other day of the year. So nice, and and I, I like that. I like you meet people that you wouldn't meet otherwise. I like that theme. And and so when at what point did you become sort of the you consciously decide okay this is going to be a circus and I'm going to theme as a circus was it from the very beginning or did you kind of build a theme over time and introduce these elements. Yeah, I mean, every season I've had a different intro. So I make a new intro for every season. This uh, last season started in September of last year. Um, and then I was sort of at the point where I was not bored, but I was like, I, I just didn't like it. Like I had made one, uh, but it wasn't a good, it wasn't the right vibe. Uh, and then I got this backdrop and I was like, well, this is fun. So I need to like kind of mimic that. So that's what happened. Yeah, and it's just a screen capture from one of your shows. It's like so much fun and so much personality and you got the bow tie and the clothing to match. It's like, you're really, you're really building in those. So you change, so you change the, the backdrop. You just, is that just a, where do you buy that? Is that just a wallpaper or? It's a, like a, like a, um, like a tarp, kind of. It's from Amazon. And of so course, it, everything's from it, Amazon. Everything. So, so it's not custom made. It's just some mm -hmm. kind of big. Yeah, tarp I design. like the curtains uh, that were in the photos before. Those are like legit, just curtains, like two, two uh, curtain sides that are put together. Um, so yeah, that's where I I just googled or I just Amazon looked up backdrops, and that's, and that's what a real came up. And that's a real fence behind you. It's not part of the image, right? It's you got no, that's, real fence. These are real. This Those is are real. all one thing. Oh, and that's then I, the... yeah. Here, let me. I here. Does that help? I can also move this. This is not like. See, that's the. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Great. Awesome. Yeah. yeah and then I went and bought little sequins, which don't show up on camera. But this entire thing is like full of little sparkly sequins. You can see some um, of them, but yeah. I try to do like little details that maybe you might not ever know, but I know that they're there, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Let, let's, I love your intro. So uh, let's say, I think Joanne has a copy of your intro. Okay. I'd love to show the intro and then we can talk a little bit about how you made it or, or what's behind it. Uh, if let's see if Joanne, uh, Joanne, can you, I think she's working. I can see Joanne working on getting the intro up and running. Here. I am pulling it up. So let me get that shared over here somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I love showing segments and like video segments. We don't see it yet. You need... Sorry about that. Yeah. So while, while Joanne is working that out, I'll just say that I think it's fantastic. And you do this so well is, is breaking the show into segments and having like different show, showing different 
videos in the show. Uh, we do it with some images, and we plan on doing a bit more showing videos so we can showcase what your what our guests' videos look like. Um, this is an attempt to get to to one of those. In just a moment. <laughs> I'll teach you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a tutorial. Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what went on there, but yeah, uh, what's going on there? Was, uh, Joanne hit some snag, but she, but it's kind of what I, I had to oh, do that ah, because. Sorry. <laughs> I, I had to break it up in the videos or like different things because I, it's just me running my show. So I needed time to uh, go from one room to a next and set up cameras and, and do all of that. So uh, that's where that idea came from is, is cool. the need for it. The need for it. Yeah. Now, now the intro itself, which we'll hopefully see soon is that, did, did you make it yourself? Did you have a videographer create it for you? How did you get it done? I, uh, put that all together myself. Nice. So yeah. you some video editing software. Yeah, yeah. I uh, use uh, Wondershare Filmora. That's the one I nice. came up with when I was Googling back in 2016, and it was what I could afford. And uh, and they have they have thankfully also kind of upgraded a lot in the last few years. So they have a lot of great stuff in there, and it's it's easy enough for me to figure out and not have to take classes and courses to figure out how to do it. Uh, but it's nice enough that the, the quality of, of you, the stuff that you make is nice. I get actually a lot of compliments on that intro, which took me three days to make. Uh. <laughs> okay, and I am ready with that intro, I believe. Right. Okay. <laughs> so bear with okay. me if something happens again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And let me pl press play. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. And we can't hear the audio, but uh, well, we can talk over it. That's a good thing. Sure. So this is so cool. So much in theme with what you do, yes. it really sets the tone, and it also said it's sort of exciting. It's a, uh, it's a pity we didn't uh, we we didn't share with the audio here, but um, yeah, look at that. I love this, <laughs> and it features you and some expression. <laughs> the expressions are great. <laughs> now, this is this is something that I think is fantastic that more people should do, including myself, which is bring in showcase previous guests during the intro. I think this is a fantastic mm. best practice. And uh, because it, it kind of gives people a bit of FOMO in, and shows them a taste of what's the level and what's to come based on what was, right? Yeah. So it builds credibility and all that. Yeah. Usually my intros have been clips of past episodes with like playing games and laughing and all that stuff. This one is the first one that has not featured that, but I just loved everything else visually that was going on with all of this that I didn't feel like, you know, it was really a highlight of who's on the show that today um, as opposed to who's been on the show. But I, I yeah, I kind of love that intro. Wow. And the theme song, I have a theme song that was written by a band um, that just for my show. So that was kind of fun, a little added bonus. Wow, that's awesome, yeah. Here's the cat again. So, so gonna... how did you get, how do you source a song written for you? Did you have a friend or this just like some service that you could use? They were actually the first guests on my show back in 2016. <laughs> And uh, there you go. yeah, so it's networking, networking. Maybe that's the other thing I've learned is networking. And uh, I'm now coming up with other things that I've learned and not being afraid of. No, that's also a really good point. Um, because I don't know most of the people who come on my show and it's me reaching out to them on an Instagram message or a tweet or an email I find on their website. And you know, you get a lot of no's because they don't know who you are or they don't have time or whatever, but the people who are supposed to be on will say yes, and you can't take the no's personally. Right, okay, great, great. So so you do a lot of prospecting to find guests, and this is mm -hmm. something that a lot of our customers uh, uh, do, essentially, right? Yeah. Need, need to find guests, right? So we have the luxury of sourcing guests from within our community, mm -hmm. uh, but Joanna and myself, but uh, most people don't have, they need to source guests from outside. 
And so when you're prospecting, do you have, do you just, do you have any kind of script or any, uh, any kind of maybe uh, media kit to, to explain to your potential guests, like, Hey, this is why you should really get on my show. Or do you just reach out and say, yeah, I would like you to be my guest. Like what's your process? I have a media kit that I rarely use. I do a lot of um, just in, like Instagram direct messages and Facebook messages. That's where I get a lot of my my guests it, are people I follow. Um, but my guests also vary because it's a variety show. So there's actors and musicians and authors, comedians. So, you know, my bank of people that could be on are pretty wide. I also um, recently found a couple websites where where you, as either someone who wants to be a guest, can make a profile and tell everybody what you want to talk about, um, or mm. as a booker to go on and look at all the profiles. Uh, so those have been helpful too. Nice, yeah. And, and to streamline the process, we uh, we we use a Calendly link, mm. and so people. Um, who want to be guests to approach us or we approach them, what we'll do is we'll tell them fill out this Calendly link. And in the Calendly link, we will put a little form in there, which is like, okay, what's your name? What's your uh, messenger account or something where we can reach out to you if you don't show up, you know, five minutes mm -hmm. before the show? We don't have to say that, but it's like, where can we find you in a case of emergency? Uh, and then we tell them what's the title of the show, what's the show going to be about? So essentially we're asking them to, as you did, to fill out, and yeah. uh, the information. So um, when I was doing the show myself, it was really a way to just create a run of the show kind of out, out of this process, essentially. So the guest would would give me the layout of, here's what I want to talk about, and here's what I'm good at. So I didn't have to do all that research to figure out uh, hey, what I'm going to ask them. They gave me the information. So it worked out nicely. Yeah, they fill so, out a pre-interview form. I have them yeah. fill that out. Mm. Uh, but I kind of like the idea that they sort of book themselves. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Like, you don't even have yeah. to, like, usually I reach out and then these are the dates I have available and then I book them and send them all the stuff. But uh, that would be a really easy way to kind of streamline that one less thing I have to do. Yeah, it's super helpful because then mm -hmm. you just you just block it for the date and time for the for the times and dates that you that you have open and right. let them pick their own. Uh, so that that works really nicely. Um, so now you also you also do something which many people don't, which is you get sponsors for your show. Mm -hmm. And I know lots of people would love to find out how do I get sponsors on my show. So tell us a little bit about your success. How did you get? If you could talk about how much would somebody get as a, uh, from sponsors? Could they expect to, to receive? How does this work? Sure. So it's relative. I, it's something I've played around with for a long time. It's one of the areas that I struggle. And I actually talk to a couple like business coaches about it because it's hard for me to be like, give me money. Like yeah. that just seems so weird to me uh, for something that I'm doing in the corner of my bedroom. You know what I mean? Like it just it feels awkward to me. But I also feel like I have a very good product that I'm making. And I and I uh I think it reaches a lot of people and I think that's fun. So I'm, I just came up with sort of advertising packages, um, different levels of sponsorships. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's, I call the people who are on my show, especially when it first started. And because I, I call them basement artists who people who are making amazing product or make amazing work, whether it's art or films or whatever it is. Um, but they're not Tom Cruise who can go on The Tonight Show and talk about it. So I created a space for people who are still putting out amazing work to be able to go and promote it and then use it on their social media. So my advertising packages are really geared to small businesses who can't afford huge ads in magazines or billboards. Um, so they start at $50 and you get a uh, sponsorship uh, credit on the show and the end credits you get on the website. I make social media posts for you up to, I'm trying to think of what the highest one is, like 150 for a month of, like, I will make a commercial for you. You'll get all the social media stuff, all of that stuff. And then I, so I put that out and I always make it and then I get afraid to put it out because I don't, like, it just feels weird. So I, did put it out. I started putting it out on social media and I actually have a couple businesses that right away were like, yeah, I'll do that. So I was like, oh, that's kind of a nice little ego boost of like, okay, I am doing something right. 
Um, the other thing I do, I drink coffee a lot. I have a segment on my show called Bean There, Drink That, where I go to local <laughs> coffee shops. Nice. And help promote them. And so I set up, you can become a coffee sponsor, which is just through a website, buymeacoffee.com. Anybody can like sign up and do it. And you can choose, like you can buy, they can, you can have your viewers buy a pizza for you or a beer. I chose coffee, of course. And they're like $5 sponsorships, but some people will buy 10 of them. So that actually has been, I've been shocked at, at that, um, response to the coffee, the coffee sponsors. Yeah. So Christian has a question here about, sure. um, essentially disclosure, I guess, to sponsorship. And he's specifically asking about noting sponsors in your uh, live stream. Um, do you need to set this if streaming to YouTube live? Uh, I have not gotten in trouble for that. I have commercial breaks that have commercials I've made for all my sponsors and I've never had anything happen <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's not typically enforced uh but it is there are standards when it's supposed to meet and and i think as far as i know i'm not a pro at this but as far as i know as long as it's not hidden as long as it's disclosed verbally in writing or something like that that there is a really uh paid for relationship that's all it counts yeah so um I think and then there are formal, more formal ways of doing it, of course, uh, uh, branded content and notation and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that mostly is an issue if you're if you're doing some kind of ad, if it's if it's ads are involved, then right. it needs to then it, then you need to be clearer clearer about it. So interesting. So um, so I, I like the fact that you have a structure around the around the uh, the sponsorships. You have clear pricing. And I think for a lot of people, I've worked a lot with influencers and, and uh, with influencer marketing, and we sponsor some shows here at StreamYard. Hmm. And number one challenge, I think, working with influencers and influencers is essentially if you are a StreamYard customer, you are an influencer by definition, right? It may not be a, a mega influencer; it's world famous um, <laughs> and a Grammy award winner, but, you're, <laughs> but you are a, but you are an influencer, right? You influence an, an, an audience. And so number one challenge is explaining the value and giving a structure to the sponsor. So being able to say, okay, this is how much I, uh, I, ch I typically charge for this, these such and such type of activities. And here's why I'm worth the money. So that's easily done by explaining, okay, this is my you typical audience or mm -hmm. my target audience. If you have, and I've seen sponsors, sponsor shows that have almost no views on them. So it's not about the size of your audience per se. Sometimes it's YouTube SEO is what makes a difference, right? Say, so I know how to rank on YouTube. Oh, this is my target audience. My content is what's valuable to you. It's not necessarily the audience size. Uh, and then being able to say, "Hey, I charge fifty dollars a spot. It's gonna charge. It's gonna. Uh, it's gonna last ten seconds. And all I do is put a slide on the screen and say this, you know, and 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 give you a shout out. Uh, you know, whatever whatever it is, put that structure in there. So uh, coming up with a structure is really um, uh, is really amazing. Uh, well, that's Keisha, that's what I was told because that's part of the reason why I was nervous. Was like, well, what are they getting for this? Like, they're gonna be on my show. Like, mm -hmm. sure, and and. Uh, a friend told me like, you know, you tell them exactly what they're getting. They're getting however many social media posts, they're getting whatever, whatever, like you're not guaranteeing sales for them. You're not guaranteeing that, mm -hmm. that they're going to sell, like anything's going to increase for them, but you are telling them that they have access to however many social media people and they're getting credits here and putting put on your website, stuff like that. That's what they're getting. That's what they're buying. Yeah, they're buying visibility, brand awareness, yeah. uh, all that stuff, all that good stuff, and and sometimes just to, just the saying that they have a relationship with, or that they are endorsed by such and so, so and so exactly. people, uh, that's that's valuable enough for them. So that's uh, so so yeah. So number one step, if you want to get sponsorships, is create some kind of value package, two paragraphs, and and a couple of sentences and information. That's all it takes, you know, yeah. put it uh, and get it ready and then tell people you're and then doing it. Telling people. And yeah, you have to yeah. you have to advertise yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. sometimes the tough part. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you can reach out to any kind of any kind of um, 
businesses you know or that might be a match for your target audience. And sometimes you can be creative about it. So I've seen, um, who was this? I've seen somebody who does a show about streaming tech and he got sponsored by, I think it was Red Bull or something like that. And they just gave him like a little uh, refrigerator with like the, the drinks. He never even drinks it. It just sits there on his <laughs> desk. Like, yeah. yeah, just sits there and he gets mm -hmm. sponsored, right? So so there are ways. And they're like, what, this has nothing to do with this show, right? But hey, it works for them. So yeah. it's good. Um, yeah, some good side conversations in the comments. I love that. Uh, that that's a great sign of success for a show when when audience is talking among themselves about the show they're chatting they're chatting among themselves that's the best success um because that's what's going to boost the algorithm and gain, gain the visibility for the show right okay so now another question is your show 100 percent live it seems like i have a suspicion that some segments are pre-recorded so the interview yeah so it's usually live and then like i said i have the pre-recorded like the coffee segments are pre-recorded but everything else has been live i'll have um like next week actually i'm traveling so i have a pre-recorded show so i have to edit that together but um normally 99 percent of the time my show is live except for except for little segments like the coffee segment Coffee segment. I love the coffee segment. I think it's wonderful uh, because a it's an opportunity to to, to sponsor like you bring in a segment, but it also breaks the structure of the show. Like mm -hmm. if we were able to now uh, break and go on location somewhere, if we had that set up, that would be phenomenal, and it could be pre-recorded, of course. Yeah, like you said. So that's. Great. I will say that since I started doing it, local new, like the morning lifestyle shows here in San Antonio have started having their own coffee segments. So I'm not saying they're stealing from me, but San Antonio <laughs> stealing from me. It's not stealing. It's uh, this is the world today. Everybody um, takes. You know, we we borrow. Or we learn inspired. from each other. Sure. We inspired. Yeah. We learn from each other. And the rule of thumb is that <laughs> Bob is asking, traveling? Who's traveling? <laughs> that. I'm fully vaccinated, yeah. if that helps. I'm fully vaccinated. Oh. So I, we I could do a whole to... show about how you manage to get vaccinated. I could yes. do, I could, we could do tips around I'm that. Flying but... back to Wisconsin yeah. this weekend. Nice. Um, so yeah, so the, the reality of today is that whatever took you a year to develop and figure out, once you figured it out, somebody else can copy in a month or less, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's just the world today. Yeah. And so the trick is staying innovative, staying on top of things, and um, and keeping you know bringing the best kind of content. Um, yeah, people are loving your show here. I love that. No okay. good. Let's let's talk about after the show. Um, so after you go live, uh, what do you do with your show? Do you just let it? Let it die. And it just goes away. I uh, I stream it live to to the Facebook page, um, YouTube, and my website is where it streams. And then I go and share it to a bunch of Facebook groups, uh, personal, like ones that I am in and then ones that like my show is in. Um, and then I do a lot of social media for it. <laughs> See, we're talking about the cats here, See? and I'm distracted because of the cat. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it is true. The cat, the cats make the show. Make Bring the cats easy. in. Babies too, kids. People kids love and, little kids. Kids and pets are what you're supposed kids to do. Pets. Yeah. People love a cute little kid that comes up on the camera and says something really funny. It's yep. awesome. Uh, Gone are the days where we don't want the kids to be, you know, show up in the meetings. We, just, I mean, there's just like, there's no, you can't stop it. There, she just walks over here. So I can't, I can't fight it. I just have to let it happen. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what the cat knows that too. Yep. So, um, so now you're, you're also working on a podcast. Are you? Yes. You, yeah. So let's talk about how you stream the for podcasting. I like sure. that. Sure. I uh, work for an arts and health nonprofit called uh, Hearts Need Art, Creative Support for Patients and Caregivers. And um, for the last couple of years, we have, <laughs> exactly, um, we have been talking and planning a podcast and then uh, 
COVID happened and we were, you know, kicked out of hospitals because that's where we do our work. And not that we had any time, we went completely virtual. We were the people that just pressed go live on uh, Facebook and that's what we did. And we were doing art and music and stuff. And then I actually came across StreamYard uh, watching um, a fundraiser on YouTube, a huge fundraiser uh, that Rosie O'Donnell was hosting. And I, f- I figured out that she was using StreamYard. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, if Rosie's doing it, I have to do it. So I looked you up and I was like, Andy, I can afford this. So I got StreamYard and started using it. We were doing live streams for Hearts Need Art. And that's why I was like, this is how we can elevate ourselves. Because at, at the beginning of COVID, everybody was live on Facebook doing, you know, all kinds of art and which was amazing. But I thought this would be a great way that we could elevate ourselves and make make our chairs a little higher above everybody else who's Facebook streaming. Um, and then we finally had some time and we created an arts and health podcast. So it's going to be visual and audio and on, you know, Apple iTunes and all of that stuff. Um, but we use StreamYard to record interviews and it's been really, I mean, we've had people from the UK, we've had people from all over um, and it launches on April 15th, which is world art day. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's really exciting to talk about and use this. It's such a great platform for even just recording stuff because you can, you it's, you can, you don't need an extra editing software to then take all of that and put it in something else. You can do it all right here. Right. And then you can take the video and use the video snippets to promote the, the, yep. the podcast as well. So exactly. so many stuff. And there's good news for, for anybody who's using string out for podcasting or wants to, which is uh, coming later this week, we're going to be releasing, uh, downloading the audio in two or more separate tracks. Ooh. So your track, my track, and any kind of additional tracks for music, uh, like uh, video clips, not the cat. Cat will be mixed with you. So you might. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't take but, her out. Dang it. I can yeah. give her a mic, maybe. Each one will be a separate audio file. Uh, or you could get it all mixed or separate audio files, and that way you can easily uh-huh. adjust the volumes, clip out the cat if you wanted to, you know, turn out the cat, and and so on and so forth. So say, in in, in some situations, say I'm talking, I'm 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 coughing just as you're talking, you'd easily be able to just mute me for the podcast, right? That's amazing. Um, Is that for yeah. every like pr- platform or which? all the like the free the whatever versions there are uh, just the pro accounts okay yeah we're upgrading more- that's the that's on my list today is we're going to upgrade today Ooh. so yeah that's very exciting music to our bank account but uh but really we 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 just the the more expensive accounts simply cost more money they take yeah. more a lot more processing so uh yeah and uh yeah and, and they will receive even more later so that's the way it works yeah exciting so exciting news for podcasters this is really really cool that's really and awesome yeah we have a lot of other cool uh cool features coming out because we've we've uh, we've hired a bunch of new developers now with hopin we have a, a much more robust infrastructure so there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that will come out later but I bet you guys are not simple. working over there <laughs> or not sleeping i mean that not you're sleeping. always working because you're always upgrading stuff which is really helpful for us who are streaming and using it that there's always like something that pops up i love the emails because then i know something good is going to happen and then i'm like oh good like and then i like it's so fun that it's not just sort of standard and it hasn't changed like everyone's working so hard to make it the best possible platform so i appreciate that and we have a big event coming up soon which uh, oh. we haven't announced yet so i'm just gonna leave that hanging here and that's say exciting. the event is coming so get ex- get excited about that because that's going to be like super super cool it's going to be a mega event like Ooh. we're we're really going to town on this one so, yes yeah. yeah 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 um yeah and you all are invited uh, i'll be yeah. there so send me awesome. the link and, Send, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> we definitely will. <laughs> okay, so um, last chance to throw in any questions, you guys, uh, and um, because uh, we're going to, we're getting close to the end of the show here. So, final questions if you have them, and also remember to start typing in hashtag Love Streamyard in order to get a chance to win a Streamyard mug 
Oh my gosh. Um, Speaking of which, yeah. I won one a couple weeks ago and it arrived. It is the best. It's like the perfect size. I drink a lot of coffee and like I'm a handle person. Like some handles are really tiny. Your mug is really good. Just yes. Like that it looks just, oh, tiny oh. in that picture, but it's a very, it holds, I think I made like four cups at one time and it held all four cups. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and it's an oversized mug. It's, so it it's, lasts you enough coffee for an entire show. Yes. And if you don't <laughs> win it, I think it's $5 on their website, people. $5 for a really good mug. For a really That's good mug. It's, yeah, it's, we, we make no profit on it. We just, we just resell it just for the community, for the love of StreamYard. I yeah. love that mug. Yeah. It's, it's I just mug. used it yesterday and it's in the dishwasher. That's why it's not here today. So, um, yeah, so I, uh, this is awesome. Lots of people loving StreamYard. I love how it kind of, at the, at the, towards the end of the show, when we, when we announced this, all the lurkers wake up, mm -hmm. the people who are listening. And it's great to know that you guys are listening, even if you don't have comments or questions. So we can, so this is a good way for us to kind of gauge how, how interesting this was. It's not just, you know, you left the browser running and walked away. We, we know that you're, you're actually listening. So yeah, it's, I it's, love things I've yeah. taken just from this uh, mm -hmm. interview is throwing out the link to join the broadcast like i've always been trying to figure out how to get like a virtual audience in Streamyard to watch you know like the, to max out the amount of people you can have in the green room to have them there and maybe bring them in and i love just like here's the link come because you don't it's not like zoom where they're like in it like you get to control all of that so that's cool and then also the hashtag like people using the hashtag to win stuff i like that i'm it's stealing cool. both of those just so you know yeah, do it. We've 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 stolen these from from of course from our customers. Um, so we've learned and been inspired by our customers, and um, yeah, and and it's interesting. We've had in the we've had great success bringing bringing viewers in on this show in the, uh, when we first did this. Now, for some reason, in the last couple of shows, not so much. So maybe we need to do something a bit differently. Christian on his show and Saturday has a ton of people joining his live show live. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's more about reviews, so there's a it's not it's it's not just to join to ask a question. You actually get your uh, YouTube channel reviewed if you join live on the show. So uh, so it's much more interactive. So maybe there's something for us to learn. Yeah, I saw a couple people that were like, "I want to join. I want to join." So maybe it's yeah. they're not just figuring out how to click the. I don't know. I, who knows? Yeah, we we also moderate. So in order to join, I'll just throw that out there. We have you have to have your. Uh, camera on so you can see that you're not some um, uh, mm -hmm. crashing, you know, not doing some weird things. Uh, and and yeah, that does happen. We uh, we will ban you if you're do, trying to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we will uh, we will chat with you briefly in the in the private chat to make sure you know to see that you're you're on target here. You're not like trying to take the show in a very very different direction. Yeah, uh, there might be another show for you if you are. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so let's see. So if you don't mind, this is the time, uh, guys, uh, type in love stream yard hashtag if you haven't yet, because, uh, Rich is about to, uh, pick your, um, uh, pick the winner. I so get to pick it. You get to pick it. So you just randomly scroll up and find a, find somebody that meets your okay. fancy. Okay. When do I do and that now? Yeah, why don't you do that? Wait, they're not like, wait. Oh, you're on the phone, that's right. No, I'm on my computer. Oh, oh here, they're just finally, wait. Listen, no one said I knew what I was doing. <laughs> wait, I'm gonna give it one more, there we go. Okay, people, there. I'm gonna go with gray man prepping. Awesome, gray man prepping. I see you here. Here we go. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oops, no, it's the wrong oh, one. Uh, so it, it scrolled on me. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Joanne. I did. Uh, there we go. Gray, gray man prepping. Congratulations on your Streamyard mark. All you have to do is email marketing at streamyard.com. You can toss in a screenshot of this if you want to, you don't have to, uh, just tell, just say that you want a mug and we will ship it out to you wherever you are in the world, as long as that's legal for us to do so. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think that's it. Any, any final kind of remarks, Rich, or anything you want to kind of bring in? Why don't you plug your own show as well? 
Sure. So my show, uh, the Richard Wilmore show, thankfully I got the job. Uh, I had to interview <laughs> twice for it. Um, <laughs> is live Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time on Facebook, YouTube, richardwilmore.com. Um, and I think I would like, I love connecting with people and learning about people. So if you're watching, follow me on Instagram and like send me a message and let's network and share each other's shows and be on each other's shows. People who have shows, I think that's uh, super important to have people who have sh shows to come on your show to promote it and to go on other people's. So if you're booking guests and want me to hang out with you for 10 minutes or whatever, or an hour, let me know. And I'd love to have people on my show because that's what it's all about. That is awesome. Yeah. And make sure to join the StreamYard community on Facebook, the official community. If you are not a member yet, there's a ton of discussions there. If you're looking for guests, if you're looking to connect with other show hosts, um, that's the place to be. And uh, if you just need tips and tricks, um, things you might have not known. I learned something yesterday that I didn't know was possible, or you could be, uh, where you could be camera off, but audio on, on StreamYard. Go figure. Oh. I didn't even know that that's possible. Yeah. So I, I didn't even know that until today, too. That's probably why I'm messing up all my buttons. <laughs> and they work here, people. They work here and they don't even know. So imagine. <laughs> imagine it's what's an awesome out there. feature. It's an yes, awesome feature. That's really cool. The truth is out there. So you can you can yes. find so many things to do with StreamYard. So uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Rich, for sharing your story with us and all of your knowledge. This was awesome. And thank you so much for creating such an amazing show. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having um, me. And thank you for making a product like this. It has changed my show and, it, and I am very thankful for it. And thank you, Joanne, for, for being the true brains behind the show. Um, I would never do this without you. So uh, not this way. Uh, I did it without you, but it wouldn't have been. <laughs> it wasn't as good. I was like, so, wait, wait, wait. I think the show yeah. was running before I started. <laughs> yeah. I would have done it but as well. Thanks for having you. me on. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks you. And thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Bye-bye.